Praise God, brothers and sisters. Today, our theme is abiding in Christ. Abiding in Christ. And we're going to come from John 15 and 5. I am the vine, you are the branches. The one who remains in me, and I in him, produces much fruit, because you can do nothing without me. If anyone does not remain in me, he is thrown aside like a branch, and he withers. They gather them, throw them into the fire, and they are burnt. If you remain in me, and my word remains in you, ask whatever you want, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you produce much fruit and prove to be my disciples. John 15, 5 through 8. Amen. And we want to really discuss three areas. One, engage the word in 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. Two, confess sin in James 5, 16. And three, walk in the spirit in Galatians 5, 25. Amen. So our subtitle is The Power of Abiding. The Power of Abiding. I often go to God with big prayers, requests for my family, friends, and anyone who needs his help. I believe God answers prayer and gives breakthrough to his people when we come boldly to his throne of grace. Hebrews 4.16 Amen. So, are you praying for other people? Are you praying for the leader of this country and other countries? Are you praying for friends, family, and your enemies? It's time that we pray for each other, for our community, even if we're not in the church building. Corporate prayer brings about to help this is how we engage the word we use the word of god everyone to help everyone starting from the most minute your household <clears throat> spreading out to your friends and your neighbors your community, and then worldwide. We must confess our sins one to another. Because do you realize by you confessing that, oh, I've done wrong, whether you murdered someone, whether you raped someone, whether you used drugs, the more you confess your sins, brothers and sisters, and it helps you become aware that you are a sinner and that's how God removes the sin and the appetite to sin. Amen? Because once we get into a habit of sinning, we must break that cycle. And this is one of the reasons why we must confess our sin one to another in James 5.16. And then we begin to walk in the Spirit, as Galatians 5.25 tells us. Because we know what we're capable of doing. And we choose to make a 360 degree turn around from the sin. So that sin can no longer harm us. And when Satan comes before us to accuse us, we can say, get behind us, Satan, because that's not who I am anymore. Praise God. Hallelujah. But in John 15, Jesus points us to our relationship with him as the starting point for prayer. 
calling himself the true vine in verse 1. He reminds us that where is branches, and branches can't bear any fruit if disconnected from the vine. Are you disconnected from the vine today? And if you are, understand that he is ready to reconnect you. But you must make that first mindset. You must take that first step towards him. Amen. And he will do the rest as the Holy Spirit works through you and around you. Praise God. In my busy, noisy world, I'm prone to blow right past this relationship with Jesus in my prayers. He stops me dead in my track with these words. If you abide in me and my word abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. In verse 7. Abide is from the Greek word, minos, which means to remain or dwell. We're to make our home in Jesus, planting ourselves in him and allowing his word to take root in us. This sets us up the condition both for faithful living and for answered prayers. Amen. <clears throat> When we abide in him, we're more likely to be praying his will. And I'm stuck by the fact that Jesus uses the word abide 11 times in the first 10 verses of John 15. Amen. If I tell my kids something 11 times, you can bet I mean it. If I tell my kids something more than three times, you can bet I'm ready to slap them across their head and try to figure out what's wrong with you. Why aren't you getting this message? Amen. What does abiding look like for you? I pray out time to spend in God's word each morning and I must do it because I'm on video talking to each one of you so I must study to show myself approved amen then I try to keep in step with his leading and be alert to his whispers throughout my day. Does he always talk to me? No, it's not an everyday conversation with him talking to me and me talking to him. And yet, even though he may not respond back to me, I am constantly talking to him. Amen. I'm fierce with my Sabbath, taking a day off each week to rest, reflect, and abide. And even to fast. I'm willing to let a few of life's external things slide a bit in order to abide more fully in Jesus. Care of my soul has to become more important than caring for my image. Amen. Jesus promises that when you practice abiding in him, God will be glorified and you'll bear much fruit, showing yourself to be his disciple in verse 8. That's the best kind of life. I want that. Don't you? 
Father, we thank you on today for this message. Just allowing us to abide in you one more day while we're here on earth. We thank you for allowing us to walk with you and talk with you and talk to your people. We thank you for health. We thank you for wealth. And we thank you for the peace of Jerusalem. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen, and amen.